everybody, and welcome back to yet another Wheel of Time TV show news video. It has literally only been a few days since I released my last one, and we already have some brand new, huge news to talk about today. We just legit got a longer teaser trailer of the Moraine clip. We got our first look at a Trolloc. We also may have a Lane Tracan sightings. We'll take a look at all of the news and notes surrounding the Wheel of Time TV show coming soon to Amazon in this video. But first, let me quickly thank the video sponsor, Ibotta. Ibotta is a free browser extension that gets you cash back just for making purchases that you already make. It's literally free money, but we will talk about them later. Make sure to smash the like button as we get started here and subscribe to the channel for all of the Wheel of Time news updates as well as Wheel of Time lore content. I'm gonna have a ton of exclusive TV show stuff coming out once the show comes out. You do not wanna miss any of that, so make sure you subscribe. Let's hit the spoiler warning for the video. Today's video will carry a spoiler rating of red with major spoilers running all the way through the second book of the series, The Great Hunt. If you have not at least finished The Great Hunt, watch this at your own risk. So there are a couple big things to talk about, so let's go ahead and get started with some casting news. It is no secret to anybody who has been following the show that the Elaine Tracan casting, or I should say the lack of an Elaine Tracan casting, has been a source of speculation among fans. The scene where Rand falls into the garden, he meets Elaine, Galad, Gawain, and eventually Morghese and Elida. It's a short scene, but it's fairly pivotal in the books. Now, as of this point, we have not received any news about any of the castings for any of those people I just listed, and there has been a lot of speculation, including some by me, that they will be cutting those scenes entirely and possibly the entire visit to Camelin. Well, there are some unconfirmed reports coming from the rumor site Recapped that they are currently casting for season two of The Wheel of Time and that they are looking for a young actress to play a princess and future queen and they are asking for a lot of years to option for the role, which in other words means that they are trying to lock down this person, this potential actress, for a very long-term contract. So I'm not gonna show the story here on YouTube as it is a celebrity nudity rumor site, which is of course my favorite website to visit. But no, it's not exactly safe for YouTube, but needless to say, they have been right a number of times in the past with stuff like this. So there is actually really no big reason to doubt the information. It's probably accurate. Basically, it appears that they are casting Elaine for season two of the show, which basically means that she has not been cast for season one of the show. And the speculation about the Turkans and the Palace and Camelin not making it into season one, they're probably true. So again, assuming that the recapped article is true, we are not going to see Elaine in season one. To me, this is something I predicted early on as something I thought they would change one way or the other. Now forgive me if you've heard me talk about this before, but a character like Elaine, a character like Gawain, Galad, Morghese, Elida, all of those characters are going to need to be locked down for multiple seasons as they are all fairly major characters in the show. It would not make financial sense for Amazon to cast all of those characters, lock them down for long-term contracts, and then basically put them in a scene or two in season one. They were either going to need to modify the story to expand all of those characters' roles or simply move them to a different season. And it appears they've chosen to move them off to the second season. And I have zero problems with this. Yes, it's important that Rand meets Elaine for story purposes. And it's also somewhat important that Elida has a foretelling about Rand. But in actuality, those things don't have to happen in Camelin right then, right there. Actually, it almost foreshadows too much of what Rand is. And if there's a desire to keep that somewhat secret for the newer fans, then having Elida give a really cryptic foretelling is probably gonna to give away the lead there. So I think it's something that's a valid criticism of the Eye of the World anyway. I don't think Robert Jordan was really trying to keep it a secret, but if they are gonna go with that narrative direction and they don't want us to know which of them they're really after, then it probably makes sense to not have this happen. So just a thought. So before we hit the main event here, I wanna give a quick thank you to the video sponsor, Ibotta. Now, a lot of you have probably never heard of Ibotta, but it's a really cool service that basically gives you cash back for stuff you're already buying. They use online coupons and deals with various providers. They like have a list of places that you can go shop, which are places that you already shop. Um, I'll give you an example. I use Instacart to do all of my grocery shopping, and I literally got $32 cash back using Ibotta for buying the same stuff that I already buy. Like legit, just 32 bucks. Uh, the great part is it is completely free to use. It's never gonna cost you a dime. 
and all you have to do is get the extension for their Chrome browser or their mobile app, which you can use on your phone. You don't just have to use this for shopping online. You can actually take it into stores grocery stores, it's gonna to link to your loyalty accounts as well. Like I have my Kroger card link to mine. It's really cool, it's completely free. Check the link in the description of the video or the one on the screen here and get the free app and sign up. You really help the channel by doing so. And honestly, it's a no brainer. It's free money for you, that's all. Just use it, awesome. Check that out. Back to the video now. All right, so if you did not know, a really weird set of events went down this weekend with the German Amazon Prime account and a longer teaser trailer they released of Moraine and Lan and something else we'll get to in a second. Uh, but then they subsequently pulled the trailer down like not that much later. So that, that clip is no longer available. We're gonna go ahead and break down the clip now as it was released. It answers some of the questions that we had from the other trailers, but it's also bringing up a whole new set of questions. So. It's really exciting to talk about. So without further ado, let me play the longer teaser trailer clip with Moraine and a couple special guest stars in the background. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and play it now as it was released a few times through so you guys can take a look. Do not underestimate the women in this tower. Do not underestimate the women in this tower. Do not underestimate the women in this tower. All right, so as you can see, this is a larger framed version of the same Moraine channeling teaser clip that we got last month. However, this time around we can see more of her body, what she's wearing, the town in the background, and more importantly, a freaking Trolloc fighting land right behind her. Yes, a Trolloc. So let's go ahead and run through this and I will point out a few things. First of all, We'll talk about Moraine and not the Trolloc. She is obviously channeling and we can see that bluish light that we saw in both her trailer clip and Lan's trailer clip. She's holding out her arms. She's doing like the angels in the outfield thing where she's flapping. Okay, I'm joking, she's not. But she is holding out her arms. It pads down, she's concentrating. And it looks like there's not only some like wind blowing around her, but also either snow or ash or maybe just some effect from her channeling. We really don't know what she's channeling. Like I'm trying to think of what she could be doing I at first thought maybe she's getting ready to call lightning or something. There's been some speculation that she's causing this wind that's making the Trolloc blow around and do weird stuff in the background. We'll get to that in a moment because I don't actually think that's true, but I'll give you what I do think is true. But yeah, so then uh, let's touch on something that has been surprisingly controversial so far with people, and it's what Maureen is wearing. Now, I've seen memes calling this like, hey, she borrowed Hillary Clinton's pantsuit or people commenting on her 1980 shoulder pads that she's wearing or even mentioning that Moraine was probably in a business meeting prior to the Trolloc attack and had to run out in her business suit. Uh, all of that's funny and I totally see it. I see why people are saying that. I don't think this short clip totally does justice to what she's wearing and I want to help clarify what it is just a little bit. First of all, let's back up and say this. It is totally fine that the outfits that they designed for the show do not look like medieval clothing from our past or Renaissance clothing. Like, guys, this is set in either the very, very distant past or the very, very distant future, both of which styles of clothing change. I have no problem with them changing the direction for that. Not a problem at all. But is she wearing a pantsuit? Well, no. It actually appears that that's her riding cloak that she has undone in the front. So basically implying that she was rushed in coming outside, which we know that she was. There was a Trolloc attack, her and Lan came running out of the inn. Uh, it's a close match to the leaked photo on Instagram of her wearing something very similar. And the bumps on her shoulders are probably the hood of the cloak that kind of pulls over her head that she just has flipped back. Those aren't really shoulder pads. That's probably, again, just the hood of her cloak. This is a weird angle to see it from, and so I can see where people are kind of misinterpreting what this is. Now, what she's wearing underneath, now that was pointed out to me by Jenny from Lesby Nerdy on YouTube and Vance, the Bard of the Red Hand here on YouTube as well, that it looks like she's wearing something very uh, close to a traditional Korean hanbok. This would somewhat match the stylings that Lan was wearing and it could point to a theme on the costume design for Lan and Moraine. It's pretty common that they will have like a design motif that they're trying to go for. I can't wait to see the entire costume design. And I, I would say this to y'all, before you make a major opinion or like a final judgment on the costume design, as I've seen some people doing, weirdly enough, uh, pause until we've seen a little bit more of it, even if you love what she's wearing. Like, we just don't have enough to really comment on. So uh, this is not the most flattering clip to try to show off the clothing. You know, they're not trying to show off her costume here. So give them a break on it. Um, I know 
again, it's funny to make comments, but like people are saying they're going to suck. They ruined it. Look at that outfit. Chill. Just chill for a minute. So moving on, let's talk about the background and what I find to be the most exciting part. There is a damn Trolloc fighting right behind her. Now, after watching this through a few times, I actually think the clip that we saw is reversed. And what we're watching is actually should be the other way around. Because if you look at the Trolloc, it looks like it's dancing around weirdly. But then when you flip the clip around, it actually looks like it's doing normal movements. And the more and more I watch it, the more and more I'm convinced that they reversed the clip for that little teaser. So what I did is I re-reversed it. Let me go ahead and show you that clip re-reversed. I'll slow it down a little bit so we can look at the Trolloc a little bit, and then we'll talk about it. So you can see the Trolloc clearly fighting someone who, if you give it a little closer look, it's Lan. Uh, he's wearing the same outfit that we saw in the Lan teaser trailer. He's got that black leather belt on. It actually appears that the Trolloc is surrounding Lan. Um, I took from this, it looks to me like Lan is probably fighting multiple Trollocs. Um, this Trolloc is kind of on one side of him. There's probably other ones that we can't see. So that was my guess from looking at it. And it actually makes sense the more and more I watch it. Now about the Trolloc. You can see it has horns, it has hooves. So Daniel Green, by the way, gets his wish. The Trollocs have hooves, how about that? Now this particular Trolloc is very hairy. They are gigantic, it's towering over land. And it does appear to be wearing armor of sorts. It's dual wielding weapons. And I love the fact that it appears to be a man in a suit and not CGI. I cannot wait to see some of the closer shots of the Trollocs, but I love that they've gone this direction at least so far. Now, we get to see one Trolloc here. We don't know that all of the Trollocs are going to look this way. This one looks a little Minotaur-esque. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping they don't all look that way, but some of them are described this way, so it makes total sense. Uh, they very well could be all misshapen and all different, and I hope that is the case. Um, so we'll have to, it remains to be seen until we see more Trollocs. We've only got one here. Additionally, by the way, the background, it definitely is Emmons Field. Like, that's that's the Winespring Inn right behind them. If you kind of match it up, they did this on the Dusty Wheel. Taylor over at the Dusty Wheel matched up the different teaser clips, and this is very much Emmons Field in the background. So this is probably the winter night attack that we're seeing here. It is not on fire. Those are actually candles in the windows in the village, which I think is really cool. The set looks amazing. I, I really, really like these sets. I cannot wait to see more of it. One other thing worth mentioning here. In the caption for the clip as released on the Amazon Prime Twitter account, it said that the show was coming soon in German to Amazon Prime, which implies a release date in the near future. Now, a German caller called into the Dusty Wheel the other day and said that when they use that word in Germany, when they say coming soon like that, Typically, it means a month or two. So I'm not prepared to say that the show is going to come out in a month or two. In fact, I'd say that's very, very highly unlikely. But here's what I will take away from all of this. I do think they are mostly done with post-production work. David Buckley, who was the person scoring the Wheel of Time before, then reportedly left the project, he now appears to be back with the show, finishing the score. So typically, the score is the very last thing that they do. So that implies that the show pretty much is done they're finishing the post-production work. I would guess that they are probably going to have the show entirely complete and ready for release by the end of a month. Yep, I, you heard it, a month. Now, that's my guess. However, not so fast. They are not going to release it within a month. The primary thing from Amazon's point of view here is not when the show could be released, but when it makes the most sense for them to release it. Based on that, they're going to want to avoid their other tentpole shows like The Expanse and The Boys, and other major streaming shows like Stranger Things on Netflix, The Witcher on Netflix, those all have seasons releasing this year. If I had to guess on a release time, my guess would be October, running through November, assuming that they do a weekly release. That's simply a guess to me at this point, albeit an educated guess based on some of their past. If we do get a trailer, I don't think it's coming this month, but I would guess we have a trailer coming in June, a full trailer. Following Amazon's trends, usually within 60 to 90 days, you're going to see a show release when we see a full trailer. So, educated guess, I'm going to say October. Again, could be wrong, but that's where I'm at. So guys, what do you think of the clip? What do you think of everything we've talked about? I'm curious your thoughts on everything. 
Let me know what you think about seeing a freaking Trollic for the first time ever. Let me know all of that in the comments of the video. Also, make sure again to like the video, subscribe to the channel to be updated when I release more stuff like this. I'm gonna have a ton of coverage of the show on the channel. So absolutely subscribe so you don't miss anything. Check out the Patreon, by the way, if you want to uh, if you want to support the channel and become a dark friend like the rest of us. Another way that you can kind of join the community here, guys, it's free. Check out Discord. Um, I have a Discord link in the description of the video. I know a lot of you are not Discord users or you're like, what the heck is Discord? It's basically just an online community. It's like the new version of forums, except we get to talk with each other a lot more. If you like talking about the Wheel of Time and you don't have anybody to talk, it, talk about it with, join the Discord server. All you gotta do is click the link in the description of the video. It'll download it for you and invite you to the server, all that for you. You just have to click it. Come join us, come talk. It's a lot of fun. There's a huge community of people there. It's how we stay in touch. Um, I'll interact with you a little bit too, so definitely join us there. Don't forget to download your free Ibotta extension or get the app as well. Again, link in the description. Thank everybody for watching. Until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do Mistress up above, slipping on a robe of blue She prances down the staircase, a fancy us a free Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?